Hello, I'm so very glad you're here. This is Jennifer McGuire. Today is about creating partial vellum cards. Now this is something you can do with a variety of products you have, and most of us happen to have vellum. This will create a kind of see-through element at the top of the card that allows you to see on the inside. Now this also works really well if you have busy backgrounds because it kind of tones down a little area where you can put your focal point sentiment. I ha also have tips for layering stencils and making the most of them. I'll start by doing the backgrounds with the layering stencils and then we'll do the partial vellum card design. Let me show you what these partial vellum card designs are like by looking at one of the completed cards. That top portion on the front of the card is made of vellum, so it's see-through. So you can see the pattern on the inside. It's a little hard to notice the vellum in the video, but you can definitely see through it in real life. And when you stand it up on display, it creates kind of this glowing look. It's also great because it softens some of that pattern on the inside, which allows the sentiment and that focal point area to stand out more. All right, let's start with one of my favorite layering stencil sets from Pretty Pink Posh, and this is the layered winter foliage. There are three stencils in this, as there are in all of the layering stencil sets I'm using today. This time I decided to use a craft cardstock to start with. This is Hero Art Sand cardstock. Over the first stencil, I am applying a white pigment ink. Any white pigment ink would work, and any ink blending tool would work. The reason I'm putting white down is this will allow us to soften the color, the brown color in the background, in the areas we're applying ink. I will soon add color to this. I'll set this first stencil aside after I clean it, and to quickly clean it, I'm spraying it with rubbing alcohol and then wiping it with a dry cloth. You could also wash it in the sink. I'll link to the bottle that I like to use with rubbing alcohol in my description below. Now it's time for the next layering stencil. Over this one, I'm also putting white ink. The color will all get added to this later on. I like to do all of the white ink first so that I can let it dry and then add the color on top. After doing white ink over the second layering stencil, we can add the third and final layering stencil and apply white ink over that. The reason I'm putting white pigment ink down first is it's basically a foundation and I'll add color on top. I'm doing this on a colored cardstock. If I just did colored dye ink directly on it, you wouldn't see the color as true. By putting down white first, then I can put the color on top and it'll look more true to color. So after I've got all the white done, I will heat set it till it's completely dry. Now I'm going back with the first stencil and applying a dye ink color here. Now you could have skipped the white and done a pigment ink here, a colored pigment ink, or you could have skipped the white and done a distress oxide ink. However, most crafters have dye inks, right? Colorful dye inks. So by putting down the white pigment ink first, we can put colorful dye inks on top and it'll be more true to color. If you are using white cardstock, you don't need to worry about it at all. Just go to town with your colored dye inks. All right, so I, on top of this, am putting different shades of brown dye inks, putting the colors there in the corners so you know what I'm using, and I'm adding a little bit of shading by mixing some lighter and darker colors together. Now we can come to the second stencil, and this time I'm applying different shades of green. One of the best ways to step up your stenciling is to use multiple colors instead of just one green. So here I could do all the leaves in one color of green. Instead, I'm doing some in like a uh, mossy green, some in a lime green, and some in a Kelly green. And that just gives more interest to my background. Using a small blending brush is helpful with this. But if you want to, you could just do it all in the same color. Now I'm coming in with the third stencil, and this will be for our berries. So I'm basically putting a bright red ink over white ink which is much better than putting bright red ink on that brown cardstock directly. That way the red shows up more. You also get a little bit of a white highlight around your stenciling and the result is amazing. I wish you could see this in real life. It's definitely worth the time of doing the two layers of ink. Okay, let's do another background that we can use later in this video on a card. This is using the Pretty Pink Posh Layered Snowflake Stencil Set. Again, there are three that layer together very easily. I'm starting with a bright blue cardstock this time. So this is pretty bright. If I were to just do regular color inks on this, it would kind of bleed in and be dull. But by putting the white pigment ink down first, it'll allow the color I put on top to be more true. 
So I put white pigment ink over the first stencil, and then I'll put white pigment ink over the second stencil. And I am cleaning these as I go along, by the way, because when I add more ink on it to it in a bit, I don't want this white pigment ink to still be on there. Now we have the third stencil. Now in this one, I wanna do a darker blue. So I'm doing a bright dark blue against that blue background, just so it's different than the rest of it. And then I heat set all of that white ink. Now I'm going back to stencil number one, and this will allow me to put a light color of blue ink on top of the white. I could do pink here, I could do purple, but I thought a soft seafoam color would be nice and subtle. So I'm using one of my favorites, which is Gina K Designs Sea Glass Ink. This will be pretty subtle because it's a light color and it's kind of a blue against a blue background. Now I did that only over the large snowflakes on the stencil. Over the smaller snowflakes, I'm using a dusty blue color. So these will have a little bit of a different color to it. Basically, we're using three stencils, but we'll have the look of lots of different colors over it. It looks like you created your own pattern paper. I thought I'd step this up even more by adding tiny dots in the background using a white gel pen that really adds some intense bright white. And I also created some dots using a glitter pen. So that just adds a little bit of sparkle. We'll end up even adding stamping onto this later on this video when we create the card. Okay, let's do another layered stencil background. I really like doing these. They're fast and are great for any kind of card. This time I'm using the Pretty Pink Posh Layered Christmas Lights. I love this stencil set too. And I'm gonna show you how to add even bolder color. So I have craft cardstock once again, and I'm putting white pigment ink over the first stencil, heat setting that, and then putting white pigment ink over the second stencil. This is just like we've done many times in this video. I'll save the third stencil, which is the little light bulbs for later. For now, I'm gonna heat set this and add the color on top. So I'm back to my first layering stencil. I've cleaned it, lining it back up, and then I will add green inks over this. To add the look of dimension to this, I'm doing everything first in kind of a Kelly green, and then adding like a moss green just on the base of these little pine pieces, just to give that look of dimension. There you can see the result of that. Now I can come in with the second stencil, and this is the string of lights, and I'm taping that down and adding a bold green on top of this. So that bold green sitting on top of the white, which will allow that green to be more true green and show up even better on our brown background. I love craft cardstock. It's just a great neutral, and it keeps from being too um, intense of a background of doing all this color on white. All right, now time for the third stencil. This is the little light bulbs. I'm just putting down a layer of white pigment ink on top of this too. But this time, I'm not putting colored dye ink on top. Instead, I'm going to use a, a paint marker. By the way, I do like the look of the white. It looks like uh, the white lights that some folks do. You could leave it that way if you want. But I'm using paint pens. These are the Colorista paint pens. I've been using these more and more lately. And these are great for putting opaque color on top of a colored background. So these go on kind of like a paint and they're very easy to use. There's a lot of great colors. There are even metallic ones, which I used in my last video. And I'm coloring this on top of the white pigment ink we put on the light bulb stencil. I was sure to heat set that white pigment ink. Now I'm putting on the color on top and look how bright and glowing that color is against that craft background. Definitely worth doing this. I could have even traced inside of the light bulb stencil with these, but this worked very well. I'll show you the final results of this background when we turn it into a card later. Next, let's use the Pretty Pink Posh Layered Mittens stencil set. Again, three layering stencils. This time, I'm using a bit of masking tape to mask off each of the openings so I can do them in different colors. This allows you to create a colorful background. You could use a smaller brush and try to stay within the lines, but sometimes the openings are too close together, so it's helpful to have that masking tape. So I did different colors over the different openings of the first layering stencil, and you can see I did blues, teals, and pinks. Oh, and also purples. Now for the second layering stencil, I'll do the same method where I use masking tape and apply the same colors, but a heavier amount so that it ends up being the darker details against the lighter color mittens we first did. 
This time I didn't put a white pigment ink base under any of my inking because the background was such a light blue and all of these colors looked nice on top of the blue. It didn't turn into like a muddy color. All right, now for the third layering stencil, which is like the white area at the base of the mittens, I thought it'd be fun to add some texture. So I'm using Hero Art's white paste. You could use absolutely any texture paste or gels or whatever you want here. I'm applying a layer of the white paste. This Hero Arts one is great, and there's a lot in the jar, by the way. And while it's still wet, I will shake on some Distress Rock Candy Glitter. This is one of the best glitters to add a little bit of eye-catching sparkle that looks kind of like snow without changing the color. So it's not too distracting and great for this particular card. I just set that aside to dry and the paste will hold on that glitter and give a great result. Now while that dries, let's start making some cards and doing the partial vellum card design. So let me show you what this card looks like so you know where we're headed. The top portion on the front of the card is made of vellum so you can see through to the inside. I'll start by trimming down one of my backgrounds to be about four and a quarter by five and a quarter inches. You could do whatever size you want. Now remember that little strip there I can save for another card. Now I'm cu cutting a diagonal line towards the top of this piece. Totally random, you could do straight across, you could do an angle, whatever you want. But the angle's kind of fun. Now we can create a vellum card base. The way that I do this is I take a piece of vellum and I score it right down the center at five and a half inches. You can see the score line very clearly. I then fold it along that score line, reinforce it with my bone folder, and then cut this in half. So right now I just have a big folded piece of cardstock. I'll cut this in half at four and a quarter inches. And now we have two card bases that are made of vellum. There are a few more pieces we need. One is to take a piece of white cardstock that is four and a quarter by five and a half inches and hold that small inked piece right at the top of it. Then put it in your trimmer and cut right along that diagonal edge. This will just make sure all the pieces line up and it's definitely the easiest way to do this. I also think it's best to cut a little bit off the bottom of your vellum note card. Now you don't have to do this, but it's gonna get covered up anyways, so you can cut a little bit off the bottom and save that piece for another project. You just need that bit of vellum on the front flap of the card. All right, we can start assembling our card. We'll have to make more pieces in a moment, but the first thing to do is take this little inked piece, put glue on the back, and put it on the inside top of the card. So I'll just slide it underneath that flap and press it down. Then I can take this large white piece that we cut, put adhesive on the back of that, and place it just underneath that, right on that inside vellum. You could use any adhesive for this, but liquid, ve uh, liquid adhesive is really, I feel, always the best option because you can wiggle it until you're happy with where it is, and it'll draw dry nice and strong. I also need a solid piece of white cardstock to glue to the back. So this is cut to the same size as our card base, which is about four and a quarter by five and a half inches. But again, do whatever size you prefer. I'm using liquid adhesive for that and placing it there. This just gives it the back a nice finished look and gives you a place for your hand stamped by message. All right, now we can flip this over and start to add our card front. I need to cut one more piece. So I'm taking this large piece holding it to the bottom of this white cardstock piece and cutting along the diagonal again. I'll show you a faster way to do this later in the video. I'll put glue on the top area of this angled piece and then I will slide it underneath that vellum flap. So this will start to uh, create the front flap of our card. So I'll just slide it under there, line it up with the back of the card base, press that vellum flap onto it, and all that's left is to glue the pretty piece on the front of that. And this will all line up. So what you end up with is a vellum kind of window or area there at the top front panel of the card that shows through to that pattern on the inside. I also like that you can see the pattern when the card is opened. Now let's add some decoration to this. I'm using the Pretty Pink Posh Winter Foliage Die Set. If you're looking for a die set that has a lot to offer to your holiday cards, this is a really good one. It's got a pine cone, lots of different leaves, uh, different size kind of poinsettia flowers. But these flowers, I believe, and many of the leaves, could be used all year round. I'll show you that later. 
I'm just gluing these kind of in a line across that seam there, right across that diagonal line. I'm putting the focal point, which is the flower, towards the top left, and then the leaves kind of sticking out to the left and right of that along the diagonal. You could use whatever you want here. You could even use a simple sentiment, but I love layering up these different die cuts. I also use the Pretty Pink Posh Mary and Bright Sentiment die set. Now this, I just used the word Mary. I cut it three times from white cardstock, glued those together so they're nice and strong, and put that right on top of my flower. I also added some red pearls just so that we would have a bit of shine and a bit of dimension. So here's the completed card. There's plenty of space in that white area to write your personal message. I like that the pattern paper that we created with the stencils is continuous. You can see it's continuous when the card is closed, but that vellum kind of softens it at the top, which allows our focal point sentiment area to stand out more. It also just creates a fun design feature, and it's neat to have that bit of pattern on the inside of the card too. You can also get a closer look at the layered inking we did and how the color is bright against the colored background and you can see a little bit of white highlight. Before we move on, I wanted to show you how I think that that holiday die set with the flowers and leaves could be used year round. This is a background that I created with the Pretty Pink Posh Layered Spring Flower uh, stencil set. It's an older one, but I love it. You could use those flowers on this card and do the same card design but non-holiday. Just change up the color of the flowers and the sentiment. It would work great with this card design. I didn't have time to do it for the video, but I thought I would just mention it in case you were interested. Let's move on to another partial card design. This time I'm doing a horizontal line so the vellum is above that. And we have a tree at the top center. For this I'm using the Pretty Pink Posh Pine Tree Die Set. This is a great set that has different size trees and I'm layering them together to kind of make the tree a bit more full. This die set would be great to create three dimensional trees also. I'll link to a video that shows an example that would work well with this particular set. It'll be linked here on the top right. After creating a tree, I use the Pretty Pink Posh Christmas Greeting Script die set. I'm only using the word greetings. I'm gluing three of those die cuts together so it's nice and strong and will hold up in the mail when it's added on top of the tree. I also use the Pretty Pink Posh Holiday Sentiment Stamp Set. There's a greeting in here that says peace, love, and joy. I'm just using the and joy and white, and heat, white heat emboss that onto my tree so it says greetings and joy. That stamp set is great for all different style cards, has a lot of great greetings included. Now you could just put this on the background, but I feel like that's a pretty busy background and my tree gets lost in it. So I thought this partial vellum card design would be great. Instead of an angle, this time I'm just cutting straight across and it's a little above center. Doing this technique will allow that tree to stand out even more. So I have the top part of our inked background and I'm gluing that on the inside of a folded vellum card. This is about four and a quarter by five and a half inches, just like I did before. After I have that glued in place, we need to create the white pieces to form this card. This time I'm taking two pieces of white cardstock, holding them together along with our other inked piece and cutting right along that edge. So I'm cutting the two pieces at the same time instead of separately, which really saves some time. I'm taking one of these and gluing them to the inside of our vellum card right below our inked piece. I'll then take the other large white piece that we cut and I'll put liquid adhesive over the front of it. I'll slide this in under that vellum card flap, which by the way, I did trim down a little bit to be shorter just to save some vellum. I'll line it up, press the vellum flap onto it, then we'll put liquid adhesive all over that white area and put our other inked piece on top of that. So that vellum flap will be sandwiched between. Now we have our vellum partial card uh, base. I did put a piece of solid white cardstock on the back just to give it a nice finished look, but you could definitely skip this if you prefer. Just to give a little definition between these different cut areas, I'm gluing a thin gold glitter cardstock strip right along the seam. So right here on the inside of the card, and then we'll do one on the front also. It just adds a little sparkle, adds a little interest, and a bit of definition. And finally, we can add our layered tree here right to the top of the card. 
So here is a look at the completed project. I really like that see-through vellum on the top for a couple reasons. One is it's a fun card design feature. Another is it softens that area so you can see our tree better, but you still have that bold, colorful background that is continuous from the inside to the outside. And you also have that pattern showing up on the inside of the card when it's open, and you can have a place for your personal message. I did add a gold glitter star to the top of the tree and some gold baubles to it just to add a bit of shine. By the way, these cards stand up nicely. I use a heavyweight vellum. I'll link to the one that I like below, but any vellum should work. All right, time for another example. This time I have that blue snowflake background and I thought I'd use some snowflake die cuts too. One of them is from the Pretty Pink Posh Mitten Shaker die set. And the other is from this fun winter mug die set from Pretty Pink Posh. Any snowflake dies would work. These die sets are super cute, but uh, today I only use the two snowflakes. I also am using some small snowflake stamps from these two Pretty Pink Posh stamp sets. I really like that uh, envelope stamp set on the left. It's such a fun design with great sentiments, but today I'm only using the small snowflakes. These will be used to add some interest to the background of our card. I'm just using a kind of tone on tone color blue. This is Hero Art's Summer Sky and stamping those snowflakes here and there in the open areas on the background. You could totally skip this, but it's a great way to really step up a stenciled background. So we have lots of different colors of ink, stenciling and stamping. Off screen, I created a partial vellum a card base, just like we did on our first example. The same thing, my diagonal line is a little bit higher, but other than that, it's the same. So here you can see that card base. To give a little definition to that angled edge, I just cut a thin stri uh, strip of white cardstock from a scrap, and I'm gluing it along there. I also created some snowflakes from this die sets I showed you earlier, from blue glitter cardstock. I only had two snowflake dies and I wanted one to be smaller. So I took one of the die cuts and cut off some of the tips, which allowed me to create a smaller, smaller snowflake. So now I have three different size snowflakes to add here to the top of the card. I'm just gluing these around that white cardstock strip that we added, which just creates a little focal point on this bold card in which we can add our sentiment on top. I used the new Pretty Pink Posh Winter Wishes die set. I die cut wishes three times from white cardstock and glued them together. That makes it more durable so I can add it on top of the dimension of the blue glitter die cuts and it'll hold up in the mail. I glued that right on top and that's the only sentiment I'm doing. You could add a stamped greeting if you wanted to, but I love the look of that white against the blue background. Finishing off the card, I just added a few blue gemstones here and there just for a bit of sparkle. You can see the card stands up nicely on display and you have that see-through area on the top of your card. By the way, if you want that see-through area to be more see-through, you could definitely use clear acetate instead of vellum. I just think the vellum is nice because it kind of softens it and gives kind of a glowing look in real life. You can also see all of the different colors in that blue background. We have some soft teal, we have white, dark blue, some glitter dots, white gel pen, all of it adds up to create a fun background. Now I have two more cards to show you that I created using the same technique that we've shared here in this video. They are very simple to do and a great design that could be done with any backgrounds. On both of these cards, I just used a heart die cut and a simple sentiment from this Pretty Pink Posh Winter Drink Drinks stamp set. It says, you warm my heart, which works with a lot of winter cards. Now remember these backgrounds that I created with layered stencils, you could do with background stamps, foiled backgrounds, whatever you want. I just focused on the layering stencils today. So this card here has the mittens that include that texture that we added with the white paste and glitter. I also stamped some snowflakes in the empty spaces in the background, which gives a more continuous look. Now for the partial vellum portion of this card, I just cut a horizontal line like we did on the tree card earlier. But this time, instead of a tree, I did a heart with the stamp sentiment along with a few snowflake stamps and a few little heart die cuts. This next card is the same design as the last one. However, I used the new Pretty Pink Posh layered cups stencil set. 
So I use craft cardstock, some blues and greens over white pigment ink for those little cups. I stamped some snowflakes in the background and did the same partial vellum uh, card design. So this shows you that any theme would work great with this technique. Before we go, I just wanted to show you a few other layering stencil backgrounds that I created, but didn't have time to finish off in this video. This is the Pretty Pink Posh la or Letters Layered Stencil Set. I did the white pigment ink with some soft teal ink and some red ink. I love, love, love this background so much. I plan to do the same partial vellum card design that I used on the last two examples with the heart, but this time I'll use the Pretty Pink Posh Just a Note script die cut and put that on top of the heart. I thought that would go nicely with that background. And finally, I created this background using the Pretty Pink Posh Layered Butterfly Stencils. I just really like the look of this. This would be great with the partial vellum card design. And at the top for a focal point, you could just use a large die cut white butterfly and put a sentiment on top. Just giving you a few different options and ideas. All right, so there you have a fun way to use any type of background and some of vellum that may have been sitting in your stash for some time to create a unique card design. If you're interested in the products that I use, they are linked below in the description. You can also go to my blog where there is a lot more information. And you can click these two videos to find other ways to use vellum. I appreciate you watching. Have a great day. We'll see you soon.